Hello everyone and welcome to this video on BGP configuration. My name is Zakaria and on this video I'm going to walk you through BGP configuration and explain some of the key concepts that we need to keep in mind when working with BGP. So without further ado, let's get to it. I will try not to go too deep on the theory of how BGP works. I will focus on just the configuration, but I'll still touch up the theory when necessary. And I'll keep it organic, so I'm not sure how we're going to go. So to get us started, let's focus on this portion of the network. It's just two routers connected with each other and we are going to try and make them neighbor up using BGP. Okay, let's start with router one. To configure BGP, we need two commands. The first one is router BGP and the autonomous system number that router belongs to. In this case, it's autonomous system 100. And we get an error message saying that BGP could not run because it cannot pick a router ID. So BGP, it needs a router ID to start. And the way it chooses a router ID is that it looks for a manually configured router ID using BGP router ID command. And then you enter the router ID. And if, and if there is no router ID configured, it looks for the highest loopback configured. And if there is no highest loopback configured, it looks at the highest interface configured. And if there is no highest loop interface configured, it just it shows you a message saying that it cannot pick a route ID. So this is a sign that we are starting this from scratch. There is nothing configured on this router. And as a rule, we're going to configure a loopback address and let the BGP process pick that as a route ID. So let's do that. Loopback zero and the loopback addresses will have the router numbers throughout this topology. So IP address 1.1.1.1. So while we are configuring the interfaces, let's configure the physical interface as well. The one connected with router 2 is fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. IP address. And that segment is going to be 192.168. And the third octet will have the router numbers. So if it's between router one and two, it's going to have one, two. And the last octet will have the router number, which is one. And two, five, five, two, five, five, two, five, slash 24. And we'll bring it up. Now we can go back and start configuring BGP process. Router BGP 100. No error messages. Good. Now, the second command we need is the neighbor command, which is neighbor. And we type in the IP address of the router we'd like it to neighbor up with. And that interface is going to be 192.168.12.2. And we have to mention the, the autonomous system of that neighboring router. In this case, it's the same autonomous system, 100. Now, these two commands are sufficient for this router to establish a session. But on top of that, we would like it to advertise the router as well. The way to tell him to do that is we use the network command. Network and we specify the prefix that we'd like it to advertise. The network command under BGP is completely different from the network command under OSPF or ERGRP. Mask. 255.255.255.255. So now router one is ready to establish a session with router two. Now we're gonna move on to router two and do the same thing. But this time I'm going to use a notepad to help me and make it less of a typing exercise. Show run section BGP and we copy it. We're gonna need the interfaces and all of that good stuff. So the loopback address will have the IP address of 2.2.2.2.255.255.255.255. And we need the interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. It's going to have the IP address of 192.168.12.2. 24-bit mask. And we bring it up. We want it to advertise the loopback, which is going to be 2.2.2.2 and neighbor up with router 1 on the same segment. 
What do you think? It looks good to me. While we're at it, we can add in some initial configuration so to make things easy for us. The no IP domain lookup. That means if we type in something wrong, it does not waste time trying to trying to figure out what it means and it takes so long. And the host name, it's adding the host name. It's going to be route two. And we go to the line console because that's where we are connected. And we do login synchronous. A login synchronous is um, if there is an output and we are typing in, the two things don't mer get merged together. And it's just annoying, just for cleanliness, really. And we do an exit timeout. This one, so it does not time out on us, basically. We copy everything. We go to route two. Ah, it didn't take the host name because it has a space in it. That's okay. My bad. And we already can see that it has established an adjacency with router one. So let's do some show commands that will help us verify the session. The first show command is show BGP for IPv4 unicast summary. This is useful to show us a summary of the session. And we can see that we have a neighbor, the state of it. So it doesn't show that it's up or down. It just show for if you see a time, it's a good sign. That means it, that's for how long it's been up. And we got some useful messages here. We see the autonomous system that it belongs to. And we see how many prefixes we've exchanged. The second show command that we can do is without the summary. And it shows us the, the interfaces that are learned via BGP. So when we, when we see the next hop, as zero, 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 it means that we are the one injecting that route onto BGP. And we can see that we've received a, the one, that one, that one from our neighbor, and it's a valid route. It's valid and it is the best. So I know I said I'm not gonna dive in too deep and into the theory and explain what every sign means. I will just touch upon it when necessary. So let's go to back to router one and do that initial config, the host name is router1. That's it. And let's do the same show commands in here. So BGP for IPv4 unicast summary. We can see that we have a neighbor. It's been up for three minutes and we've exchanged the prefix and we've received the the, a route for 2222. Let's see how it shows on the routing table. Show IP route. And we can see the BGP sign in here. And also the administrative distance of interior BGP is 200. This is very high. So if we had an alternative route via other sources like OSPF or, uh, or a static route, then it wouldn't make it to the routing table. Okay, so far so good. Let's focus on another portion of the network, which is this one. And it's going to be another autonomous system. And let's see how it goes. So for right and wrong, we need to configure that interface and add in a neighbor command. That's it. That is three slash zero, the IP address. So that segment is going to be 10 dot three dot and the, the routing numbers. So between one and six, that one slash 24 this is for r1 now we do r6 r6 is gonna be the host name is r6 everything is the same the loop back is 6.6.6.6 .6 we want the same interface to be dot six in and in the last octet 
no shot right to bgp 300 instead of 100 we want it to advertise the loop back which is going to be 666 and neighbor up with router one on that segment which is 10.3.16.1 and the and it is remote as as 100 this should be enough for router six paste it I don't see any error messages. I think we need to add the neighbor command on router one as well. So router one, we go to the router BGP process and tell him to neighbor with 10.3.16.6, which is the interface on router six. Remote AS is 300. And we have an adjacency up good stuff yeah so far so good <laughs> okay let's do some verification in here on router 6 show pgp ipv4 unicast summary we can see that we are a neighbor with router 1 we can tell it's not so one from the last octet here because that's what we decided to do and we've received two prefixes okay let's see what to, those two prefixes are we received the a route for one 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 and also for the two 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 and we have this internally injected into BGP. Let's do show IP route. We have two routes coming from route to one and notice that the administrative distance is just twenty as compared to two hundred. So this is one of the differences between IBGP and EBGP. Do you think we can ping? The two 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 two. Let's try being two 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 two. We can't ping the two 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 two, even though we have a route for it. It's a problem. So now, even though everything looks okay, it's not okay yet. So this is one of the problems we're gonna have to solve. But before we try to solve this one, so I'm just trying to show you one of the problems we have already. Let's finish configuring all of the topology and find out other problems that we might have and try to solve each one of them. You ready? Also this time to add more complexity, we are going to neighbor up with the loopback address instead of the interface address and see what's going to happen. It's going to be route of five. That is the same config. The loopback is going to be 5.5.5.5. What interface is that? Two slash zero and the IP address is 10.2 and the rest follow the same rule 10.2 between one and two the last octet is going to be the routing number which is five we'll bring it up it's autonomous system 300 uh, 200 we want it to advertise the loop back 5.5.5.5 and the neighbor is Oh, we said we're going to neighbor up with the loopback address. The loopback address of router 1 is 1.1.1.1 and remote as 100. That's it for router 5. Copy. Boom. And I'm going to add the neighbor commands on router 1 as well. I'll do it manually on that one. We are already there, so neighbor and the loop back of router 5 is 5.5.5.5 .5 remote AS 200. And because we are still here, we're going to neighbor up with R3, which is this one. And we're also going to use the loop back address of R3 just to mix it up a bit. So we're going to have an EBGP session using a loopback and an IBGP session using a loopback. Just so we can see if there's any differences between the two. So it's going to be 3.3.3 remote AS is 100. It's the same as router 1. And let's configure the interfaces as well. Let's just verify what's already configured to show IP interface brief. So we need to configure these two. 1 and 2. Okay, one and two. 
We're gonna copy this portion here. The one slash zero is gonna be one ninety two one sixty eight dot the routing number, which is one three dot one, and the one going up is going to be ten. I want to be the same network. That one. This is on router one. Two interfaces up. Now router three. Three. The same. The loop back is three dot three dot three dot three. We need that interface to be between one and three is going to be that three at here. And we need zero slash zero. It's between router three and router four. So it's one ninety two one sixty eight dot three four dot three. Autonomous system one hundred. Advertising three dot three dot three dot three. We have the first neighbor is router one to its loopback address and the second neighbor is going to be R4 and we're going to just use the interface and that segment is going to be 192, 168 between 3 and 4 and the neighbor is going to have that 4 at the last octet and it's also remote AS as 100 yeah it looks good for R3 copy go to R3 paste it on R3 Mm, something went wrong here. Okay, let me verify here. Oh, this end. That's okay. And we add in the router PGP config. Yeah, done. We just ha had an end on the middle of the of the document. That's why it did that. Now router four. We're going to be four, four dot four dot four dot four. Gonna have an interface going up to router two. So between two and four, that four, and the zero zero is between R three and R four, which is three four dot four. Router BGP one hundred. We want it to advertise the loop back. Add neighbor up with. I wanted to use address families. I'm just gonna make this longer. Should I use address families? Okay, let's use for router. F uh, I don't know. I can. Just, never mind. So we got a neighbor with R3, which is in 192.168 between 3 and 4.3, and a neighbor with R2, which is going to be between 2 and 4.2. R4 is all set. Copy. Let's verify R2. I think it's missing an interface. Show IP interface brief. Yes, it's missing the one coming down to R4. One ninety two one sixty eight between two one four, so it's two four. The last octet is the writer number, which is two. Twenty four bit mask, and we'll bring it up. And the neighbor command under router bgp okay let's verify if it's there already or not show run section bgp yeah it only have one so we need another one coming down to r4 right between two and four and it's going to have that four remote autonomous system is 100 and we can see an adjacency coming up with r4 now all we did is that we went on all of the routers configured the interfaces and we did a network command asking the pgp process to advertise the loop back and we put the neighbor command and the remote AS for each of the neighbors. So it's like three commands. So now let's verify what works and what not and figure out why what's not working is not working and trying to fix it. Let's start from routes and one because it's like in the middle. It's going to give us a better idea of what's happening. Show PGP IPv4 unicast summary. And that will tell us the states of the relationships that R1 has. 
So we can see that there are two that are working fine. We've exchanged prefixes and everything, but there are two that are not working. And those two are the ones we've used the loopback address instead of the interface. There are a few things that we need to consider here. The first one that we need to remember is that BGP uses TCP as a transport protocol. For TCP to work, you need to have IP routing already working. So if we do show IP route, we will not find routes to those loopback addresses. Show IP route. Let's have a look. And because there is no route toward that loopback address, that will make TCP not working, which means BGP cannot work. What is this interface here? Directly connected. This is supposed to be between one and five. So I should have done one five. It will still work, but because we set, we set the rule about third octet, I will just fix it up quick. Show interface brief. Yeah, this one should have been one five. I'm just going to fix it up. It's not going to, I think it would still work if the other one has one two as well, but just so we follow the rules that we said we're going to do in the beginning. It's 10 dot two dot between one and five dot one. I'm just going to make sure that router five has the same thing. Show IP interface brief. Yeah, it needs to have one five. It would have worked because they are on the same network segment, but still just for consistency. Good stuff. So we were saying that there is no route toward the loopback. So let's add a route to the loopbacks that we asked BGP to neighbor up with and see whether if that's gonna fix it up or not. Let's do a static route. IP route toward 5555. That exact prefix is gonna come out 10.2.15.5. And let's add another one toward the other loopback. To route 3. 3333. Three, three. Exact prefix. 192, 168, between 103, and it's going to be 3. Good stuff. So router 1 is all set. Let's go to router 3 and router 5 and do the same thing. IP route. Toward 1111, exact prefix. 10.2, between 1 and 5, it's going to be 1. And router three needs uh, an static route as well. Let's bring up router three. Happy route toward the loopback. R1, exact prefix, and, and the egress interface. 192, 168, between one and three, that one. Let's see if that fixed up anything. Router one. and the states are still idle, so it didn't fix it. So which brings us to the second problem. The second problem is that each router is expecting the other neighbor to have a source address of that loopback address. So by default, the BGP process, even though it's trying to neighbor up with the loopback, it always sends as a source the IP address of the, e of the egress interface. And because the, the other router is expecting a loopback address, it doesn't neighbor up with it. So we have to tell the routers to update the source address to those particular neighbors. So for router one, we need to update the address of two neighbors. Okay, let's do that. The first neighbor is toward 333. And we say update source. And we mentioned the interface that we would like to use as the source. It's going to be the loopback interface. And also for the neighbor 5555. You see, that was sufficient to bring the neighborship up. Let's do the same thing for 5555. And verify again. Now we fixed one relationship between R1 and R3. They've exchanged the prefix already. However, the relationship between router 1 and 
route so five is still down but before i start fixing that i need to do something else i need to update the source on r3 because if i don't they're going to start flapping even though the relationship is is up now but in the real environment for good measure you would want it to be on both sides so i'll go to route 3 do show run just so i can have the neighbor statement in front of me okay that neighbor router bgp100 neighbor one that one that one that one and we're going to update the source of its packet it's going to be the loopback address so we're done with this one and router 3 has two sh sessions going on let's verify those since we're here already unicast summary and they are both up and exchanging prefixes so there is no problem on r3 and we'll also need to update the source on r5 so i can have an idea what's going on here okay router bgp 200 neighbor one that one that one that one update the source to loop back zero great stuff let's verify again on r1 see what's happening so the relationship between r1 and r3 is up but this relationship between r1 and r5 is still idle which means down Th this is going to bring us to another difference between IBGP relationship and eBGP relationship. When there is an IBGP relationship, the time to live of the packet is 255, so it's allowed to hop around the network. However, in an eBGP session, the time to live is zero, so it's only allowed one hop away. If we're trying to establish a, sh a session with the loopback of another autonomous system, that is two hops, one hop to the interface and another hop to the loopback address. So we need to let the router know that the address is uh, more than one half away. And the way to do that is pretty simple. So we go to router config mode, BGP 100, and we specify the neighbor that we would like this to happen with, which is 5555. And we got a couple of options. One is to dis disable connected check. So when we disable connected check, it means that we allow one half away. So this should be in using a loopback address. This should be enough to bring the relationship up. However, in case if it's more than one hop away, we could use mm, multi-hop. Where is it? Yeah, we could use eBGP multi-hop and we can specify how many hops that TTL value. So let's try it. Disable connected check. And we do the same thing on R5. and the neighborship came up good stuff let's verify again see what's happening now r1 all of its relationship are up the one we did with the interface and the other ones we've used the loopback address and we've encountered two problems the the update source problem and the multi-hop problem and we fixed it right so now my guess is is that all of the relationships are up and running but it wouldn't hurt if we double check. Show BGP IPv4 unicast summary. And we can see that the, <clears throat> the relationship is up. I'm just going to copy this command. Two is good. Three is good. Four is good. Five has one relationship, it's up, that's good. And six. So the relationships are up, but the question is, did they all receive the routes to the loopbacks and are they reachable? Okay, let's start with R6 and see what it received and whether they can reach it or not. R6. Swipe unicast. It received two, one, two, three. It's missing the four. It did receive the fifth and the sixth. It's internally injected. 
let's ping the first one ping one dot one dot one dot one good two so it cannot ping router two let's try router three i'm guessing it's going to be the same problem yes the same problem cannot ping router 3 it did not even receive a route for router 4 ping router 5 so it also cannot ping router 5 usually when you have a route and you cannot ping it usually the problem is that the other router cannot respond back to you let's go to router 2 and let's double check if that's the case Let's see the routes that it received. It did receive to route to one. We, I think we've pinged it already. That's working. Route two, which is itself, so let's not bother with that. Route to four. And let's ping back route to six. And it didn't work, and of course it did not work because it does not have this greater than sign. You see these ones; they have this greater than sign. These ones are missing the greater than sign. The reason it is, look at this next stop here for these two routes. The loopback and the IP address of router six. If we do show IP route, we will not find routes toward those next hop. So basically we cannot reach the next hop. That's why it does not have that greater than sign in the beginning. Reasons for that is that when router one advertised a route to router two, it did not change the next hop. So router one received it from R6 and R5 and they put in that they are the next hop for that address. So router one, it did not change anything. It just sent it over the way it is without changing the next hop. So we have to let router one know that if he wants to advertise routes coming from outside, it needs to tell everybody that the next hop to reach the outside world is itself. So let's do that. So go back to router one. I'm just gonna have a quick look at the config we have already here. For the neighbor router 2, which is this one, I can tell because of the third and fourth octet, and router 3, I can tell because of the loopback. So we need to let router 1 know that when he advertises routes to those, it needs to change the next hop to itself. Okay. Conf T, router BGP100. So for the neighbor, 192, 168, 1 and 2, 2 next hop self and we have another option here which means that because normally this one does not affect the relationship between ibgps it only affects if it receives a wrapped from an ebgp however if you want it to be in general we can add the all keyword but we don't have to do that now next hop self enter and we modify for the other neighbor as well which is 3.3.3.3 next hop self and we go back to router 2 and double check if it has changed the next hop when we issue the show command exit road trip to router 2 show bgp ipv4 unicard and sure enough we have that greater sign here and we've changed the next hop to the ip address of router 1 which we can reach Let's try the ping again to 6.6.6.6 .6 .6 .6. <laughs> okay it, oh yeah of course it's not gonna work because it originates the ping from the from the interface and our r6 cannot reach the interface because it's an internal ip address so basically we have to do the source com source from the loopback and sure enough it's working <laughs> Let's try the ping router 5. Source 
from 2.2.2.2 working nice so now the ping of the routes that we've received via bgp is working however we, we have some routes missing if we go to let's see what's on route one show bgp ipv4 unicast one two three route one is missing the fourth <laughs> And we have a rib failure. Basically, it just means that we, because we have a static route toward those two addresses, static route makes it to the routing table. Ah, uh, we can have a look at that in a moment. So a route to number four is not appearing on route to one. Automatically, it will not be able to reach five and six because route to one is the point where it's connected. Okay, let me explain quickly what's going on here. This is, has to do with the differences between an IBGP session and an eBGP session. So when a, when a router receives an update from an IBGP session, it does not forward it to his other IBGP sessions. He only forwards it to his eBGP sessions. But when it receives an update from an uh, eBGP session, it forwards it to everybody else with his IBGP sessions and his other eBGP sessions. So that's what's happened. Let's take an example of router three here. So the prefix 3.3.3.3, when router three advertises its loopback to router one, it does not send it to router two. That's why router two is probably missing the 3.3.3. It only sends it to, to its eBGP sessions, which are R5 and R6. And similarly, with router 4 and its loopback address it sends it over to r2 and r3 but these two routers they don't send it over to r1 so it's probably missing on r5 and r6 this is one of the limitations of ibgp so normally the way to fix it is that if we had a full mesh topology connection like that we don't need to have a physical connection between the two because it's built over tcp if they can reach each other because normally they should be running some kind of interior gateway protocol like ospf and they need to have a full mesh topology to be able to share all of the route between each other however this solution is not scalable because the more routers we have the more connections we need to add if we have 10 routers for example that gonna the number of sessions is gonna go bigger and bigger and there is also another solution which is more scalable which is route reflectors. Basically route reflectors is that they reflect a route that they receive. They act like a mirror. So when you declare a router as a route reflector, it acts like a mirror. So once it receives a route from an IBGP, it reflects it to its other neighbors, which are called route reflector client. I'm not going to go too deep on how route reflectors work and how they and the rules that they follow. I'm just going to just if you remember the idea of a mirror, you'll be able to follow with me. So the plan is to declare R3 as a route reflector and R4 as its client so that when it receives routes from R1, it can forward them to R4. And we're also going to declare R4 as a route reflector and R2 as its client. When a client sends an update to a route reflector, it sends it to its other IBGP sessions. So R3 will know about R2 and R2 will know about R3. And R4 will know about the rest of the network. And if R4 reaches R1, R1 is going to obviously advertise them to EBGP sessions. Okay, let's try that, see if it works. Starting with R3, show run. We said R3 will have R4 as a, a route reflector client, which is this neighbor. 100, neighbor 192, 168, 344, route reflector client. And that's it with R3. We don't need to let a router know that it is a client. We just go to the route reflector and point to the client. Let's do the same thing on R4. And we declare R2 as a, a route reflector client.
that's it all right so for let's see if it worked show bgp ipv4 in cost it received one two three four five six so right so four has all of the loopbacks but i can mm, some of these prefixes don't have greater than sign because they can't they don't know how to reach the the next hop that is because we did not run an IGP in that domain. So I'm just going to run OSPF real quick on that domain, see if it's going to fix it. Let's bring in a notepad. T router OSPF on ID one network. Let's invite everybody to the party. Area zero. And for router one, we would like some passive interfaces, the ones connected to the outside which are fast two slash zero and three slash zero. And while we're at it, let's save it as well. Copy on router one. We don't need these two on the rest of the routers. I'm going to take them out. Copy again. Router three. And router four. And we'll wait for a OSPF relationship to come up. The OSPF adjacencies came up. Let's do show command again. And we can see that they have that greater than sign. So, so now sh everything should be okay. But some of them have this R. That means a rib failure, which is not a bad thing. It just means that it didn't make it to the routing table. The router decide OSPF or a static route is a better option instead of using an IBGP route because of the administrative distance. So administrative distance always win and OSPF is better than internal BGP. So four has all the routes, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. Also has all the routes. Two. One, two, three, four, five, six. Also has all the routes. And he's got some of them are received from two sources. And he chooses one of them, depending on the route attributes that comes with it. You can see that this one is the one that's valid. And here as well. And here as well. Double check route to one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good. Route is five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Very good. And route is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's it. Great stuff. We're done. We've used many bits and pieces to get BGP working. There are so many things to cover about BGP, route summarization, route attributes, redistribution, but at least now we understand some of the basic behavior about how BGP works and how we treat IBGP different than eBGP and how to fix those problems. I hope this has been informative for you and until next time.